What is sound exchange and why do you need it? Hey, what's up everybody? It's MC Stein. So recently I got a question in my DMs on Instagram about sound exchange. I've talked a little bit about the need for sound exchange, but I think for um, a lot of new artists, especially me when I was first started to get into this kind of information, it was really confusing about what sound exchange was and why I needed it. So if you're a recording artist and you're trying to get your business side uh, knowledge kind of built up, the first thing you probably learn about is the distributors, how to actually distribute or put your music on the, the, the streaming platforms. Now, if I go to uh, a streaming service and I go and I search MC Stein, let's say, and I click on MC Stein's album, The Artist, and I click on a song off that album, that is an interactive stream, which means Interactive means like the same, it just probably is what you imagine. Like if I interact with you, you and I choose to engage in a conversation. An interactive stream is where I purposefully go and select that song to be played. A quick example that I'll talk about in a second is a non-interactive stream. And that is something like Pandora, where you select a particular genre perhaps and then Pandora chooses which songs to play that's non-interactive here's the thing where non-interactive music streams come in non-interactive is like satellite radio Pandora for example where you may just select something select a genre and they play music in the background or they play music and you don't really have a choice of of what's coming next. Same way with satellite radio. You turn on a radio station and they play whatever songs they choose. Now, in order for them to play those songs, they have a register of which songs are played. Pandora, the same way, it keeps track of which songs they play for their customers who, who pay the fees. Sound Exchange is a company, it's a nonprofit company. Now, they do take a percentage of the royalties that they collect, and, uh, and that may be kind of a, uh, a point of contention for many artists because they're saying, why is this organization taking 10 or 15% of these royalties? Well, because they have a relationship with these organizations that, that collect the data. You can do this as an independent artist yourself. But do you have the time to contact hundreds of organizations that in every single country that collect this data? Sometimes it's worth to give someone a percentage to do the work for you. So just to recap, Sound Exchange, they collect royalties when a song is played non-interactively, specifically overseas. So Sound Exchange is going to collect your royalties when your song is played non-interactively overseas. And how this differs from when music is played locally is that a PRO will, will pay you when, a mu when music is played locally or performed and your publisher will pay you when music is either played interactively on the streaming services or if it's actually bought, say, off iTunes. I hope this was helpful. If this is just more confusing, Sound Exchange talks a little bit about what they do on their website. You can also, you know, you can Google search Sound Exchange. They have a Wikipedia page. You can read about that. So, Best of luck. Please leave a comment or any questions that you have below, and I'd love to help you out or uh, answer any short questions that you have. Thanks again for watching.